Are you preparing for Facebook product manager interview? Do you know how to answer this product sense interview question? Are you afraid you're gonna miss one of the lifetime opportunity to join Facebook? If so, you're at the right place, my friend. In this video, I'm going to show you a Facebook product manager mock interview and what's the best framework you need to answer these kind of Facebook interview questions. And on top of that, what kind of top 10 clarifying questions you need to ask the interviewer so that you can nail the Facebook product sense interview question. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee from drnancylee.com. I help people transition from worker bee to product manager and business leader. Today, we're going to do a mock interview with the APM product manager at Lerador Labs DC. And she's going to show you guys and demonstrate how to prepare for Facebook product sense interview. All right, so we have Genesis join us today. Hi, Genesis, Hi. how's it going? Hi, thanks for having me, Nancy. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and also, congratulations for your APM offer at Lerado Labs DC. Um, I know you must have gone through a lot of case interviews and also interview experience. So let's just give a, a, a like um, explanation and example for lots of people who want to get into the product management space, especially you represent a group of people who has no product management experience. How did you make it happen? So let's do a case together. All right, are you ready? Yes. Awesome. All right, so let me ask you this question, Genesis. Please design an app for bus driver. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen so you can kind of see how I'm thinking about the problem. Okay, so um, before I start uh, addressing the problem statement, I wanna maybe do a clarifying question as to what the purpose would be to create an app for bus drivers. Yeah, totally. And in this case, you can assume you interview for Facebook. I want you to think about why does Facebook want to create an app for bus drivers? Okay, so given Facebook's mission to give people the power to build communities and bring people together, together, using tools. So this is Facebook's mission. And I can imagine the purpose or how this fits with Facebook mission is uh, an app for bus drivers would help people get to and from places in order to uh, be able to create that community and uh, spend time together. Yes, exactly. Okay, and so then given the mission, now I'm still trying to understand the situation before we kind of dive in. Um, we want to know what's missing. And my belief of what's missing is you know it's very critical right now um to create efficiency right because um a lot of what's happening with the like currently the reason that bus drivers are needing an app might be to make get their get from one place to another faster um so just generally creating efficiency in the whole um, bus scheduling um, and we want to add always a COVID consideration. So as COVID uh, restrictions are lightening up right now and a lot of cities are opening and people are getting vaccinated, um, a lot of people have reported there being more traffic than they were used to. So the workers that were not able to work from home, like bus drivers, um, they're now facing more traffic than they have previously had in the past year or so. So, and it's also increasing the usage of buses because passengers are more comfortable getting on buses, uh, people are vaccinated, and there's generally more adoption now of public transportation than there was in the past year. So okay. the, those are the, re the COVID considerations. So we could say increased adoption, more traffic, um, and this is kind of adoption from the passengers, and more traffic, again, harming the efficiency of the bus scheduling. Um, so now we want to look at our customer base. Um, and I know we talked about, so the problem is to design an app for bus drivers, yes. but we think about not only the bus drivers, but other, but also other stakeholders that would be affected or have a, um, a stake really in this app. So we have the bus drivers, um, and then the main, the most a close connection to the bus drivers would be the passengers as they're the people, you know, getting on um, the bus. And then we would think of um, maybe the 
companies or the employers um, of these bus drivers, of drivers. Um, and maybe we can consider uh, other people on the road. So like um, if the app is for specifically for bus drivers, there are other people that are on the road with the bus or you know, creating traffic as well. So we could say other drivers on the road at the same time. Um, and yeah. last, uh, lastly, I would say, um, when I think of bus, I think of like the school bus mostly just because that's where my experience lies. And, um, that's probably something that's going to, you know, kick up with the fall and in the fall, uh, kids are going back to school. So I would say uh, another stakeholder would be, uh, the parents of the passengers since they are minors. So we could do parents of minor passengers. Great. I like your diversity of thinking. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm just wondering among all of them, which one would you prioritize or which multiple stakeholders would you prioritize um, to design the app? Okay, so um, I know we have them all listed like this, but I would think of maybe drawing a line here as there's kind of the bus drivers that we were, you know, that the app is primarily for them. Um, and so I want to think about, you know, the bus drivers being um, prioritized. And then of these four, which for the sake of time, since we wouldn't want to prioritize every stakeholder possible for the app, we maybe we want to do a prioritization for these four um, stakeholders in order to see which other one might be uh, most impacted by this app for bus drivers. Mm -hmm. and I would do that is using these the following criteria. So the criteria would be impact, size of market, and urgency. And to clarify, um, the urgency would be like how quickly they would want it to be um, made. This app, the size of the market is you know kind of uh, uh, self-explanatory, like how you know how big that market is or how many people would adopt it. Um, and the, would be more personal on how much that would change their daily work day or for the bus driver in the case of the bus drivers and in the case of the other stakeholders just how it would change their daily um lives mm -hmm. uh, so when, when i think of these four um other stakeholders uh other than the bus drivers um the impact would definitely be the most but for the passengers simply because they are uh, getting on the bus, you know, so if we're talking about efficiency for the bus schedules, like they rely, passengers rely on bus drivers getting to the stops on time um, mm -hmm. and knowing, you know, if your bus, if you're the bus you take every day or even one day is going to be where they said it was going to be at the time it's going to be. And if it's going to stop at every individual stop at the time it's supposed to get there and, you know, their livelihoods could depend on it if they're going trying to get to work. Um, employers of the drivers as well, I would say that currently uh, the impact for them would not be as great as it is for the passengers, but it would definitely still be uh, impactful for them, you know, how they carry on their, um, you know, scheduling and stuff like that, because that app could potentially be something that employers use to communicate things to their um, employees. Um, other drivers on the road at the same time, they're lives or their daily usage of things would not be as heavily impacted. So I definitely have a lower prioritization for, for this one, just based on impact alone. Um, and just to clarify also, for the sake of time, these three are being equally weighed, uh, even though um, given more information by what Facebook's uh, intention behind this app would be, we could maybe uh, shift the weights and it, we could even come out with a different result. Yeah. Um, but and I think the size of the market here, if we think about parents for school, you know, the school buses are not the only buses that exist. So I would already give this a lower prioritization as well. Prioritization. And that kind of leaves us with the passengers and employers of the driver. Um, and just thinking ba alone, based on the size of the market and the urgency, I would have to go with the passengers. Um, just because there's a lot more individual passengers than there are companies for uh, that employ like bus drivers um, and that urgency as well, um, you know, having something that would make a bus reliable would instantly 
affect a passenger over the employers because they're still running a business. So it's not like they they need it to even start doing business. Like they're still getting money at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, right. So we're gonna go with passengers as our prioritized um, on the other end. And so now when we think of our two prioritized customer segments, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different types of bus drivers and passengers as well. And so we're gonna need to break that down a little bit more. So when we think of bus drivers, there again, I mentioned school earlier, so we can start with that. So we thought we think about school drivers, like the yellow buses. Yeah. Um, and other than school, um, but school buses, there's also like the public ones. So you need maybe like a, a metro card or something like that. So we go with public transportation, transportation. Um, and these are two separate things. I'm kind of just listing them together so you can kind of see how it's being divided. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, something else that we could think of would maybe be um, kind of how public transportation, we can think of maybe long distance uh, drivers and I can maybe abbreviate it like LD and then uh, short distance or maybe like city, like staying within the same city. So we could say like local or city um, drivers and I can probably abbreviate that as SC, so short distance. Um, another type of cut, like way to split bus drivers, maybe experience level. So maybe like new drivers, mm -hmm. experienced drivers, because they would have completely different uh, needs. Um, especially, you know, a new driver in a new driver uh, with this whole increase in traffic, if they just started and the, you know, the traffic is kind of rapidly increasing, it could really affect that learning process or that learning curve. Um, in that case, well, let me ask you this question. Um, you showed us many different kinds of segmentations. So what is a primary segmentations would you do and to split the draft uh, bus drivers? Okay, so um, we take these different uh, customers and do a second, uh, like you kind of, you're asking me to prioritize. So I would um, do another prioritization and this time I will show you um, a little bit more um, detailed of how I would do it. So. Okay, so here we would just put the names of each one. So we have LD for long distance, SD for short distance, new and experienced. Mm -hmm. And here again, same, the same similar prioritization framework I had mentioned. So we have impact, size of market, and urgency. And going through the different types of um, bus drivers. Sorry. So um, going to the impact for public transport. Um, I would say that. Uh, question, question. So when we uh, prioritize these, because I think they overlap a little bit. For new drivers, they can also be long distance, and and they can also be local drivers. Do you think we need to prioritize this way, or we pick one or two, or step because they overlap? Make sense? Right. Um, I would say the main. Uh, groups or when we talk about size, the size of market is because of that overlap, the size of market um, really has an impact on the prioritization. I think it's the one that really differentiates them all in order to know which groups are bigger because some of them it is kind of uh, nested in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the short distance kind of encompasses like the school and like public transport. And yeah. so be school and public transport would be nested within um, public transport that would give the size of market already a lot, it would be a lot larger than that of school and the public transport. So I could probably just do it like that. And then as far as new and experience in that way, 
um, there could be a, a more prioritization of newer drivers just for like the impact. But as far as size of market, um, I can't really say because I don't have the, the market research as far as, you know, are there a whole bunch of new bus drivers or are there a lot more experience? But I would assume that there are more experience. Um, and because there's kind of a competition there between impact and size of, of market, um, it would already be a little lower for me in um, prioritization. Um, so for size of market, I could equally give that like experience, probably four, new, three, impact, um, that'd be more impacted, a lot less impacted. Um, school, again, this these two are kind of uh, out because they are, I'm kind of, you know, categorized categorizing them under um, short distance. Um, so lastly, long distance, I would say the size of the market and the, or the impact is not so much because they, a lot of times they drive at night, so they're not dealing with the same traffic um, and they tend to be more experienced as well. So the impact is also very low. Um, the size of the market is, it could be um, the same size. I think it's a little bit less. My assumption is that it's a little bit less than the local uh, bus drivers. Um, and lastly, just for urgency, the urgency is definitely more, more there for short distance, uh, new drivers, and those are the top, the top two. So Yeah, so I'm going to quickly fill in the rest of them in order to kind of give the part that I kind of gave my um, thinking. I'm going to shortly fill in the numbers in order to give the final um, result. Yep. So if we look at uh, kind of how this was, um, these different prioritizations, all in all, the only category that received uh, the high, the all fives in all categories on a scale of one to five was short distance. Um, and I believe that this is the segment of bus drivers that should be categorized. So I will just uh, bold it there. And then when we think of passengers, this is another group that we must consider the different types of passengers. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned a little bit earlier about the school age children. Is there on the school bus? And then since we have um, also just thinking about like the public transport, like, or just the city, like the people that get on the bus are city residents, which again, this segmentation does kind of, like you were saying, it has a, a nested sense, like an overlap. Um, and doing the same prioritization with these two, the size of the market for, of, for city residents is much larger. So the size of market would be more than that of school-aged children. Um, the urgency for school-aged children is less because most schools are, uh, like the majority of school of school age children when they will all be going back to school is in the fall and therefore uh, the city resident priority for urgency. Um, and lastly, for impact, uh, the children themselves would not really <laughs> feel the impact of the, you know, the app being created, they might get to school uh, more on time, or they might know kind of when the bus is coming. I mean, but kids or parents typically they tell their kids to go to the bus stop uh, much earlier and so they have like a more a bigger window and of time to wait because um, they're just going to school and if they are late to school and it's the bus's fault then it's okay whereas city residents if they're getting to work late they can't just say oh the bus was late like it's your responsibility as an adult or whatever um, to get to where you're supposed to go and that's not an excuse that could be made um, so again the city residents would take a uh, a precedence over the school age children, making it the segmentation within passengers that needs to be prioritized. Very good. So quickly, so you mentioned the urgency for school kids is lower because 
they don't really go to need to go to school until September after COVID. But maybe right now people go to work every day. They they need it at the moment. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Great. Cool. All right. So now you prioritize like short distance drivers and passengers. Can you let me know as you continue, how would you um, plan to structure this case? What the pain point? What does it look like moving forward? So moving forward, mm -hmm. um, my uh, thing to address would be talk, uh, figuring out the customer needs and kind of stating those to you. So the needs or pain points. Um, and that is really going to help us figure out what kind of app uh, needs to be created because it's not just oh like create an app for you know for an arbitrary uh, concept. It's really based on both the need or pain point of the short distance drivers and the need or pain point of the city residents as they have many. Um, so again, we have the short distance drivers and we have the city passengers. And the short distance drivers, the biggest, the biggest uh, concern that they would probably have is traffic and a huge concern uh, right up there as well um, would be being tired. So maybe like the fatigue of sitting in the traffic. So the traffic is more so like getting um, to the stops on time and the fatigue of sitting sitting in traffic which I can imagine would lead to burnout right like you know and wanting to you know take off of work and things of that nature so and that's not really helpful for them at all so I think fatigue sitting in traffic um along with that driving like the the long shifts maybe trying to find a bathroom like if you are just driving all day so maybe lack not lack necessarily but um hard to find bathroom break maybe you can rephrase it yeah hard to find a bathroom break very cool um so those would be the three uh customer need or pain points and very similar to how um up here we had our impact size of market and urgency we have a very similar a uh, framework for the prioritization of the needs and so quickly i can show you um how i would do that so i would have um need which is the traffic the tea, and restroom and then we would have the impact and instead of the size of market, we would think about the size of opportunity. So what a size of opportunity, that would mean like how big of a deal would it be for Facebook to corner this uh, market um, based on who Facebook wants to be in the market, right? Mm -hmm. So size of op for opportunity and lastly urgency and the total column that I missed on the one above. So um, for traffic, um, the impact of traffic is huge. Uh, it kind of plays into the next two so traffic makes it hard to find the bathroom you know if if you don't know where the bathroom is be for the sake of not knowing the bathroom that's like one thing but also you could know where the bathroom is and still not be able to get there because the cars are in the way so the impact is definitely five like that is huge uh fatigue is also a really big deal um but i would say the fatigue for a city driver is going to be a lot less than that of a long haul driver um, someone who's going, you know, state to state, um, but it's still a concern. So I would give that a four. Um, and then the restroom, uh, the trying to find the, the bathroom break again, um, is a big deal because <laughs> you don't want to go in the bathroom on yourself. So I would give that a five. Um, for size of opportunity, I think this is really the biggest um, thing because I know Facebook is very mission driven and really has a vision for what, you know, who they want to be um, in the future. And I think this is the most important if I were to weigh these three categories. I know I had them evenly earlier, but now thinking more so about um, Facebook specifically, this is the category that I would weigh the heaviest. Um, and then, so if we go and think about um, back to the mission, right? So wanting to bring people together, 
and helping them build community, the traffic is getting in the way of that. Like they're not going to be able to uh, connect or build community or anything, whether it be like a meetup group or anything like that, um, if they can't get there because there's cars in the way. So that's a five and I would give it even higher if I had that in my ranking. Um, the fatigue, it's an issue um, for like for the size of opportunity. I don't necessarily think that it's as much it plays at the size of opportunity in you know decreasing the fatigue of bus drivers. The, it seem, it's not necessarily that uh, closely linked to um, Facebook and who they want to be, um, but I do think that they generally care about you know the well-being of people. So I might give it a three just because it's very specific and not necessarily that closely linked. Um, and for the restroom, kind of similarly with this, it's not um, well. I have to think. I would give it maybe like a four because like that, you know, the bathroom break and trying to find a bathroom um, would be a really big opportunity for what, you know, with, with the existing Facebook tools, you know, like check-ins, things like that. So kind of thinking about those things. Um, oh, I don't understand this part. Um, you're saying that finding public bathroom is have higher opportunities for Facebook because what can be used by other features of Facebook or is more in alignment with the mission? So tell me more, I, I didn't get that part. Um, so I would say Facebook already has a, a lot of uh, into, uh, features that help people um, share, oh, you know, I went to this place, you know, the like pages and like reviews and things like that. And so the size of opportunity for restrooms, it could be, you know, because of COVID, um, not, this is less of an, it becoming a little bit less of an issue, but it's still a great issue. You know, some businesses still do not allow that in the past did allow public restrooms mm -hmm. are, are having their restrooms be employee only or customer only. And the, you can't expect the bus driver to stop to, you know, buy a meal or something at a restaurant if it's customer only, because they're trying to decrease the traffic of people going in the restrooms. Um, so what I mean by size of opportunity is that Facebook has uh, check-ins, reviews, and it's uh, that it has that community-based feature where people give recommendations. Um, and there is a possibility there of helping people find um, clean bathrooms or open bathrooms, uh, you know, COVID compliant businesses that are, you know, for safety, if your personal safety um, standard, you know, is like, a masked business, maybe, you know, there could be um, something about the masked business restroom versus, you know, an open kind of not regulated uh, bathroom for your comfortability. Because um, so in summary, you say what, what you're saying is finding public bathroom, how it's related to building communities was because there are uh, people helping each other out and posting information. So the opportunity actually was pretty big, even if it's solving a personal bathroom issue. Yes, exactly. Uh, awesome. Okay, great. So for the sake of time, can you quickly just score urgency and give me a summary? Which pain point do you want to prioritize? Yes. So um, my just a quick rundown of urgency. Um, the traffic <laughs> needs to go like tra the, the, I, the concept of traffic in and of itself is urgent, right? Like if the cars are in the way and I need to get from point A to point B, I need it to be fixed now. I need to um, figure out how I can either decrease it, manage it, whatever it may be now. Like not, it's a very uh, timely thing. Um, fatigue, it's inherently um, part of the job, but at the same time, there's a little, so there's, you know, there's a, a uh, in the job market in general, there has been an uh, employee shortage. So it does have a high urgency because bus drivers may be driving more than they normally would if there were more people working. Um, but again, the fatigue is a little bit part of the job um, that they sign up for, even though it really shouldn't be that way. So I did give it a little bit less of priority. And lastly, um, the bathrooms, um, the urgency for that as well. The, I, the bus drivers, I think, are not um you know i don't think they're really expecting there to be a solution today regarding the, the bathroom breaks it's a lot of times it's kind of you know taking uh kind of like doing it on the fly or like uh, doing like the best they can on that regard and you know maybe um planning their shift around it so this is kind of how i came to this and then i scored 
traffic as a high, so we were bolded. Um, and yes, then we have the needs of the past or the needs and pain points of city passengers. Mm -hmm. um, so then we would think about what what would a city passenger need or what pain points would they have? Um, getting to my destination on time. Yeah, very good one. Um, the bus arriving to my stop at the scheduled time. So, do you think the first one, second one, so similar? Why? Yeah, I, I was thinking they're kind of different because the bus could arrive to my stop at the second time and at the right time and then encounter traffic. And then we, <laughs> I didn't get to like work on time. So they're kind of like different, like knowing that the bus, if the bus says it's going to get here at 817, it's going to be here at 817. And I know that. Um, and then knowing that also after I get on the bus at the right time, I'm going to actually get to where I need to be on time. Gotcha. So those are kind of two uh, factors. Um, and lastly, a pain point of the city passenger um, might be just still a little bit of the COVID like um, deterrence or kind of being a little bit, um, you know, fearful or not, maybe not as like, ex not excited, but as like willing or open to being on the bus because of just like maybe cleanliness or distance between pa like between passengers. So maybe just uh, COVID compliance slash like health safety, which is still a big thing, especially um, now since more people are getting on. Um, whereas that's in the past, you know, someone who's been on the bus all year might have been on there by themselves, one other person, and now suddenly everyone wants to get on the bus. So um, again, very similar. Um, Thing here we have the destination time um, stop time and COVID um, so for, yeah, so for the sake of time maybe you can just give me a summary um, finish your table and let me know which one would you prioritize okay Um, so this is the um, prioritization that I have. So starting maybe from bottom to top. So with COVID, um, the impact is not that much, is not as much maybe as the others, just because the COVID concern is really, um, you know, widespread, like going, you know, at work in the store and everything. So I wouldn't say that the impact or the change that would occur for personal um, people that are on the bus would be too great um, if that would be if that was a prioritized need um, the size of the opportunity is a five though because um, keeping people safe um, health and safety wise would help them to continue to have the ability to build community and uh, gather um, when people are not sick um, and the urgency again is a three because things are getting a little bit better and because the majority of uh, people are vaccinated so I would say the urgency is a three um, totaling 11 stop time uh, the impact would be great because you would know um, exactly when you can go outside um, there would be no question the size of the opportunity though is a three simply because um, it's not as important, even though it would be annoying for the bus to get there at very times and when it said it's going to, the main concern really is getting where you need to be. So that 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 initial inconvenience of maybe, oh, it said it was gonna be here at 1017, but it's here at 1019. I think as long the passenger, as long as you get where you need to be at the time that you're supposed to be there, it's not as big of a concern. And so that's um, why in the end, the destination time is the most important. Um, need to prioritize for city passengers. Very cool. So now I do have a question for you because you prioritize like two uh, pain points for two group of primary users. Um, which one do you think is the most important for us to design a solution to among those two, which one would you con continue to prioritize? Um, I would prioritize uh, the city passengers uh, pain point, which is the destination time, because the destination time uh, kind of encompasses um, 
the traffic portion of it. So in order for uh, bus drivers for their job to continue to be needed, there needs to be passengers using the um, passengers using the buses and for and if the if the schedule is not if it's not efficient if people are never if the bus is always late and people never get to where they need to be on time people are not going to use um the buses and i, I like i said the traffic is kind of embedded within destination time like uh doing something for destination time would help traffic um doing something for traffic may not necessarily like help for de destination time the other way around because you may um, avoid traffic but then um, you know, you could be taking also like a longer route, a much longer route that would still make you late in the end. So I think destination time should be prioritized. Um, but the question is, who do you think the main users here? We, uh, the case question is design the app or bus driver. Um, the main user is the bus driver, but I think the main goal of the bus driver is to, to, for the efficiency of the app. So it says efficiency of like the scheduling getting to desti the destination time, um, like from this stop at the beginning of the route to this stop at the end of the stop, is kind of the, that's the point, but the traffic is the main pain point. So I think the desk getting the destination time would really um, help both, even though it's listed uh, in this here as like the city passenger main pain. Point. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Let me do this. If I want you to design solutions to like achieve the purpose of uh, like arriving the destination on time, what would you do? Or even earlier, if you can early, I think even better. <laughs> so what's your solution? For, okay, so solutions. Yeah. So can I have a moment to kind of think through? Go ahead. Uh, okay, so. Um, so the first solution that I would uh, think to make would be a navigation app uh, for bus drivers with real time traffic data um, mm -hmm. that seeks the fastest of route and which would inherently avoid traffic. So that's going back to the idea of the destination time being uh, the overarching uh, concern. Um, and so this would help them get from the beginning of their route to the end of their route and, you know, going back if they're looping through that um, in the fastest way possible. Um, and so at times this might even be, you know, um, like skipping, not skipping necessarily, but like not waiting at stops until when they were supposed to be there, if they got through there faster, because it's really just trying to optimize and get from beginning to end as fast as possible um, without uh, damaging the schedule too much. Um, and then the second uh, app would be one that has a bus driver and passenger side where the drivers um, are having, you know, the map kind of with um, data in it to with, with the traffic data in it, but there's also a passenger side where the bus, where you, you can see, the passengers can see where the buses are in real time. And also bus drivers can see um, other buses because a lot of times buses will be familiar with the routes of the buses of others. And if they see that a bus is like really behind on their um, um, like route, they might be able to tell, oh, there's there might be something going on there that maybe even the traffic data hasn't like picked up because maybe for cars, like the traffic data might be car specific in a sense, and maybe cars can get past whatever's going on, but the buses might not be able to. And so by having uh, that visibility, like bus to bus visibility, basically, um, they could have a better idea of like what they might need to do. Um, and lastly, um, as a little more like out there, um, solution would be um, an app where there the app is kind of a uh, twofold so it is it does have the bus route so that with for the passengers um, and the drivers but there's an added element to where um, if there is this traffic situation if we are prioritizing of uh, minimizing the destination time if the bus gets into a uh, some type of situation where passengers may not be able to get where they need to, um, there would be uh, bikes or scooters, et cetera, you know, even uh, something like that, where the app would allow you to like scan like a QR code to like check it out. And like that still would be like embedded into your bus fare because it's like the bus company's fault that you didn't get to 
uh, where you were supposed to, and you could, you know, if you were late to work and the bus, like there's like an accident right here, like you could check the bus, the bike out and just take your bike and, you know, take the bike to work and it's like rented out, um, similar to some of those ride sharing uh, scooters and bikes that are in existence today. So those would be um, my three uh, solutions. Very creative, very interesting. Some of those solutions, very interesting, very cool. Okay, so if a Facebook product manager, we cannot build all three solutions at the same time, which one would you prioritize and why? Um, I would prioritize, Solution one, um, solution one, because of the prioritization, I think uh, because we prioritize destination time, I think solution two speaks a little bit more to uh, stop time um, and trying to like know like where like, you know, the bus is here at A17, I was supposed to, you know, like that, like very specific thing. I think um, stop time one, would help because that real-time traffic data is not just like, you know, where cars are in space. It allows also for, um, you know, drivers and drivers of all types of vehicles, right? So like trucks, cars, buses to like input, um, you know, hey, there's a accident here or like there's construction here. If it's not like, uh, it hasn't been put on there by whoever is like, uh, like updating it, I guess. So it does kind of uh, incorporate with that like community of like helping each other out um at the same time it really is prioritizing that destination time um need because the main uh, goal of it is to get from point a to point b and also um you know still go by the stops that you're supposed to um you go stop at but it's really the main goal like trying to, to optimize that so then the bus drivers get more breaks and they're happier so yeah Cool. But don't you think the first solution we already have Waze or Google Map, they, they're solving this already, right? Um, I think that they're solving it for cars. Um, I'm not a bus driver myself, uh, but I think that the main difference of a bus version of this would be having that bus specific information. So like if every bus had this like bus specific information kind of how I was mentioning before with the solution three like there's some information like it might seem like the heat map of traffic like it might be like yellow or even green for cars and for buses it may not be that way because everyone's getting bottle might get bottlenecked into like one lane and maybe you might not fit or something it might be could be something that is not easily predictable and so by having this um like expanded throughout bus drivers. I think the bus driver community can really um, help to provide bus specific information in order to assure that the buses will uh, be able to get to where they need to be on time because they're all doing the same thing. So right, so they're all like stopping every so often. Um, something that could also impact not just like getting through um, like construction or accidents, but also being able to stop. Like there could be construction or something that's preventing uh, buses from being able to stop. And so they might have to stop way past the stop and like wait for people to walk up to the bus. And that's something that would only really be an issue for a bus because cars um, are not required to do that um, unless that's like a very specific, a niche, a very small percentage of cars are required to stop for people. And there it's that type of data is not gonna be as big as the buses helping each other out to get to where they need to get to at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay, great. So thank you. You solved the case. So you can unshare right now and then I will provide your feedback. Very good. Genesis, thank you so much for sharing your like sample can, uh, case answers to the Facebook product manager interview or actually Facebook product sense interview questions. Really good. Um, you did, I think you solved the case very well. You did uh, a fantastic job in terms of your segmentation was good in terms of your thinking very broad. Besides like bus drivers, also other stakeholders that involved, which can change the priorities and decision-making process of making an app. And the way you elaborate about your rationale, for example, you bring the COVID idea and whenever I challenge you why you do this and your uh, elaboration about and the, the challenges and pain points are really good. And of course, th there is also room for improvement is that the first of all is when we talk about sub-segment of buses, and I think it's easier, you do not put in, for example, the overlapped uh, segmentation into the system. For example, the, um, 
I think the bus driver, I'm oh, sorry, the, yeah, the school bus is part of public transport, which I challenge you, you shouldn't put it in, right? So therefore for your uh, prioritization for sub-segment, if they overlap with each other, I wouldn't even put it in. Something else about the pain point prioritization at the end, I asked you to prioritize which pain point to prioritize compared with the, the bus driver's pain point and also the passenger's pain point. Usually when we do a case, we always try to do the pain point for the bus driver because it, they are the primary users of this app. So if I were you, I would still choose the, the traffic, reduce like understanding the traffic as part of the, the thing I want to prioritize. However, your rationale was good. I think your rationale of uh, selecting which solution wasn't, wasn't very strong. Lots of times you're talking about specifically how the solution works. I'd rather talk about how like you see uh, different solutions in a higher level, such as like uh, ease of implementation or engineering effort, like uh, which one is more effective solving the problems, uh, like uh, how it's compared with existing solutions or any kind of risk. So many different ways to talk about it. Um, you only talk about how specifically that uh, the solution works instead of mentioning different things. Um, so that's something we can improve for sure. However, I still like your solutions. I think your solution is very creative. I, I was very impressed when you come up with a scooter, especially the scooter solution. I think it's a very, very good one. Cool. All right. So what do you think and anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think that um, that feedback is definitely really helpful for me, especially as I'm going into my new uh, APM job and kind of that uh, thinking um and i agree at the end in the solution space i definitely didn't i didn't maintain my uh, prioritization framework that i have um that i know for the solutions so i've definitely worked on uh, making sure i use that in order to prioritize my solutions awesome awesome thank you very much and another reminder for everybody is that i made a special video talking about the right framework to follow and you should check out this video right here talking about how to design the, the product case interview for Facebook product sense interview. Awesome, great. Thank you very much, Genesis. And for everybody who wants to learn more about how to become product manager, feel free to hit the subscription button and also download different kind of PM mock interview examples and clarifying questions you need to ask when you uh, nail the product sense interview questions are all in the description of this video and hope all of you guys will get a product manager offer very quickly. All right, talk to you guys soon, bye.